Because I got high. Because I got high. Because I got high. Welcome my fellow Grand Strategists, my name is Daniel Stone and I'm delighted for you to be able to join me today for a very special episode of Imperato Rome and as you can see it's not exactly Imperato Rome but I'm going to be showing you this new mod that's just been put out today called Lord of the Rings Realms in Exile and it's uh, a mod with huge potential. It's made by Blood Royal and a small team of his and uh, the reason why I'm making this video is to kind of get this mod out there to the public and kind of show them the potential that this mod has and also get it noticed so all fans of the grand strategy genre and Lord of the Rings can finally have something that mixes both of the two together and uh, I mean if you're a Lord of the Rings nerd I mean like I am I mean I've watched all Lord of the Rings films uh, the extended versions over 20 times read all the books everything so uh, I am really excited to showcase you this today so first we're going to start off by showing you click on single player and we'll kick off a new game and see what happens as you can see at the bottom they have put quotes from all the different people of the universe so you can see there was a quote from Treebeard there's some quotes from the Witch King and a load of other things but um, the first of all first thing I'm going to do is before we get into this beautiful map we can see I'm going to kind of tell you about the context of the mod so um, the uh, game starts pretty much after the wars of the last alliance which is the wars uh, which was the alliance between elves men of the dwarves were against uh, the forces of darkness and Sauron which culminates in the downfall of Sauron and the loss of the one ring so uh, this mod is set in the middle of the third age uh, after the return of Sauron to Dol Guldur and when Gondor at the height of their power Anyway, the first thing we can see is a pretty nice map, um, a detailed map of uh, Middle-earth. Um, however, to see it nicely, you do have to go into the political map mode. Uh, the terrain map mode is not done just yet. I mean, it's still lacking a bit of flavour. So uh, I'm sure that will come later on anyway. So if you want to see a nice, beautiful map with colours, then please click on the political map mode. So um, we can see all of uh, the peoples and the realms we've come to know and love from the Lord of the Rings universe. I mean, we can see the realms of men. Gondor, uh, and you also have uh, the Men of the Dale, uh, we can also see uh, the lands, well the lands of the elves, so we have Lorien here for example, let me click on Lorien, there we go, we can see the domain of the elves, um, there's also the domain of the orcs, so the orcs of Mordor, you can see look there, the right there, we've got a lovely little picture showing you Modush Shalgur Shak who is the leader of the Orcs of Mordor. Um, I've no idea who that guy is. I, mean, I can't really remember who he is if he was even mentioned in the books of the films, but hey, he is the leader of the Orcs. And there's also the refuge of the Dark Lord Sauron and his uh, and his um, Nazgul acolytes. So you can see the Dark Lord Sauron is all the way up here at the Cult of Melkor. And he's here. Here we go. Sauron and Melkorian at the Dark Lord. And uh, we can even see the Witch King of Angmar. So uh, El Murzor and Melkorianath, the Witch King of Angmar, who is a beast. I mean, he'll pretty much rape everybody in his path. <laughs> so uh, you can see, yeah, so that's all the, you can see this really detailed, there's loads of the different peoples. And yet yeah, it is uh, super, super interesting. Um, anyway, I'm going to start a game just to show you guys uh, basically what they've actually done in the actual game. So I'm going to choose Gondor just to quickly show you. Um, so as you can see, they have uh, put in uh, different traditions depending on each country. So we can see Gondor have got traditions of the Edain, which gives them fort defence. Uh, Angmar is completely different, so it's orc philosophy. They haven't really scripted all that done yet, so, uh, but that will come later on. Uh, but anyway, so Gondor, going back to Gondor, traditions of the Edain, we can see that they've put heritages for, different, uh, for the different nations and the different realms. So they've got the Southern Realm, which gives them provincial loyalty, diplomatic relations plus one, but fort maintenance is plus 100%. Uh, they've got the religion in there, Edain, they have the culture groups they've made, so Dunedain, uh, these these are Gondor are Dunedain, which is a member of the Edain culture group, which is comprised of Black, Numenorian, Dunedain, Lesser Dunedain and Numenorian. Um, so let's quickly get into a game just to show you guys uh, what the different things are. So as you can see, um, at the start of the game, uh, as Gondor or as any other realm, say if I was starting with the Witch King of Angmar, would have a different message. Uh, so it gives you this message to give you a kind of context of the game. A bit like in the original version of the game where it goes the die is cast after Alexander's death and the partition of his empire between his generals, the Diadochi. Well, we've got one here. So Gondor is near the height of its power, its wealth and wisdom far surpassing any other mortal realm in Middle-earth. The Dunedain of the South are the bulwark of the West holding the lines of the Anduin against the warlike tribes of the East and the South, 
and even expanding eastwards and southwards towards Run and Harad. Yet darkness is stirring once more. Greenwood the Great is darkening. So the forest of Greenwood is dying. It's the beginning of the dying of the forest of Greenwood. This is all mentioned in the films. Um, and your kin uh, in the north send news, uh, send news, arisen dread realm of Angmar, and news out of Rovanian and Dorwinian speak of restless tribes on their borders. Gondor stands strong, but if the old enemy is returning, there is no time for complacency. So yeah, we get this nice little message um, to show you basically uh, the context of uh, the start, well, the, in context of start date. Um, you can tell, we can also see the detail they've gone into the units. I mean, look, they've even got your unit models. Uh, we've got the Gondor tree look on the armor. They've got the Gondor helmet, the shield. It all looks really nice. It's the same if you go to the orcs in Mordor. They have orcish units, and you can see. So a lot of details been a lot of details gone into this, which kind of makes me think this is it's got a lot of potential and a lot of promise um i mean the detail is so much that they've even gone to make a bloody minas tirith look they've made a massive 3d model of minas tirith i mean look look at that i mean this is just gorgeous it's just beautiful they've even done the signifiers let me just go up here and quickly scroll around the map um and see look there's a signifier look, they've light the fires they've actually done that i mean it is it is amazing it really is um it just looks so cool I mean, I really can't wait to try this out in uh, in detail. Um, so, uh, yeah, really, guys, check this out. It is pretty awesome. Um, anyway, I'm going to quickly go through the different changes in here. So uh, let's first of all show you the military traditions. They've actually kind of made their own tradition depending on the people you play as. So as you can see, Gondor have got traditions of Edain, and they've kind of filled up filled it up with a few different traditions uh, depending on uh, depending on what kind of realm you play or culture or nation whatnot i suspect they will fill this out with more stuff as the development of the mod goes along but i mean i'm liking it i mean they are committed to it by the looks of it and it does look like it's something really really promising they've also added some new units they've added goat riders uh, i've no idea what they are but they've also added war riders i mean that is that is really cool you can probably you can make war riders i mean that is something i've got to try out i mean i mean i love the wargs especially sharku uh, and his war riders, I mean, I always found them really, really cool. And I do expect them to add much more. Um, I mean, I really do. Um, I expect them to add many more different types of units um, as it goes on. And they've also um, put in different decisions as well. If you go into uh, decisions, I mean, depending on who you play, I mean, they have uh, they've had they have added some uh, specific decisions for the specific uh, realms that you were playing as. If I was to go on to the characters as well, they've also added traits. I mean, and what is really cool is with the traits they've added, they've added descriptions like this one here, Blood of Anarion. And they've added a really detailed description of, like, what it is. I mean, I'm going to read it to you guys now because I just found it really cool. Anarion was the second son of Elendil, high king of the Dúnedain. And while Anarion perished in the wars of the Last Alliance at the end of the Second Age, his son took up the rule of Gondor and his heirs have been the primary protectors of the West ever since, holding the, Aduin, the Anduin against the Orcs and the wild men of the East and the South. As such, this lineage descended from the legendary Beren and Luthien from the First Age, who contended with Morgoth himself, commands great respect from all the Dúnedain, and has earned the chief hatred of the Dark Lord Sauron. If anyone could unite the race of men under a single banner, it would be the heirs of Anarion. So it's like, honestly, it, it's just this little level of detail that makes me think that these guys are going to do something really cool. Um, the Strong Blood of Numenor is another one. Um, the Blood of Numenor runs almost true in this character, granting it lifespan thrice that of lesser men. See? Health plus one. I mean, you can remember in the films, Aragorn, he is Numenor. Uh, he has this blood of Numenor, which means he lives longer than everyone else. Um, it's just it's just really cool. I mean, <laughs> uh, I just find it really, really awesome. Um, so, uh, anyway, I think that's about it for this video. Um, I mean, this is just to show you this. I mean, the potential is massive. And this video is really to show you this and to kind of get the mod out there and get it visible. So the so people can use it, give them give the people making it feedback so they can make it better and keep it growing because I mean this could actually become the Lord of the Rings mod for a grand strategy game that we have all been missing. Uh, I mean it, it's it could be that and if I hope these guys keep kind of keep making it as good as it already looks. I mean okay it is very very early days and uh, of course it is um it is sort of uh, just started so there are going to be some bugs there are going to be some issues but um i think it can be something like it can become something really really good um i'm going to put the link in the description for you guys to the steam workshop for this mod 
Um, bear in mind that um, it is only compatible with the 1.2 beta for now, so you need to uh, turn on the uh, the beta in your in on, like on Steam for the game. So you go into like right click on um, go into the library, right click on Improve Auto Roam Properties Betas, and opt for the 1.2 beta. And um, honestly, I mean. The attention to detail it looks like these guys are planning to put into this i mean they seem to be right suckers for detail so i hope this gives it the recognition and support that this mod needs to have to be able to grow and become something amazing but uh anyway that's it for now guys thank you so much for joining me and um, i'll see you next time for another video anyway see you later bye bye